so BC. Hopefully all is well with everyone out there in the uh, interwebs. Uh, I'm feeling stupendous and tremendous. Uh, today was uh, today was work, you know, but uh, I'm shaking it off. I'm feeling good. Outside I have the allergy itch in my nose. That happens. Uh, let's get after it here. I got a little bit of a thing I'm going to roll with. Uh, I know the theme, but I don't know the volume right now. So let me dial this in so we can have a conversation. Hopefully you can still hear this in the background. This album is what triggered uh, the theme of the night, right? I've been, you know, I keep it eclectic, but uh, lately I've been doing themes. I did jazz recently. I did a metal hangout. And so today is all in the world of uh, uh, funk, R&B, soul, jazz fusion, um, Latin groove stuff. Hopefully you can vibe with that. Uh, I like to rub elbows with all walks of life. And hopefully there's some walks of life that uh, enjoy that groove. So uh, this is a recent find. It's on the uh, record player right now. I don't need to speak on it too much because hopefully it's just loud enough that you can form your own opinion. But uh, that's that in the background. So this is a five fresh finds. And if you guys know me, I do five fresh finds in a manner of which that if I find three artists, uh, I lump them together. All right. And if, like, if, you know, three three finds from one uh, musician, or if I, you know, have one musician and it reminds me of something I already own and I pull that out, that's just, you know, uh, cannon fodder to be shown in the vinyl community because I can't recall everything I've ever shown. So uh, let's get after it. Uh, at least I showed a record before I got two minutes in. Uh, nothing crazy here. Uh, the, the, the rundown of the uh, routine, uh, the cigar of the night is uh, Monte Cristo Classic Series. I'm already halfway through. I've been hanging out. I've been listening to some records. I slammed a couple waters, but I decided to have a nightcap. Uh, nothing crazy on the nightcap. A uh, little Jameson Black Barrel. Uh, I put a splash of ginger ale on it. And if you're going to do a ginger ale, if you're making your drinks, people, get a proper ginger ale. This is Verner's from, uh, from Michigan. So there we go. And now let's get down to the nitty gritty of it all. So, that record that I just showed spawned the topic at hand, right? So, I bought that because I knew for a fact it was the only copy of that record for uh, Record Store Day drop number one. However, they're doing the drops now, right now. I think it's a combination of uh, uh, both COVID safety and corporate greed. The more they can get you come back for Record Store Day, the more money they can shell out of you. But, uh... I had to grab that one. I knew it was on the copy, but there's some things that have been lingering. And I've seen them in multiple places, and so this is kind of the rigmarole. So, this right here is a Soulful Proclamation um, by Messengers Incorporated. If you were to trust the hype sticker, uh, and everyone should always trust a uh, Record Store Day hype sticker because there's no inaccuracies ever, uh, Soulful Proclamation is a holy grail for soul funk collectors and enthusiasts. Privately pressed in Oklahoma City in 1972, fully licensed and remastered for Record Store Day 2018 in a strictly limited edition of 1,180 gram. All right, my compliments to this is it still kind of has that uh, private press uh, center label, which is nothing that special. But uh, this is a polyline paper, but polyline sleeve. And uh, if we're paying for Record Store Day titles, uh, that's how they should come. And uh, one thing I like about this, I think is really cool, um, besides the music, the music is kind of like, if you like Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, you're probably going to vibe with this. This is a uh, earlier 70s, I think the band started in the 60s. I don't see it, well, besides the fact that I just read 1972, um, a dumb, dumb, dummy. But uh, male, female vocalists, as you can see right there, uh, quite the large uh, uh, ensemble. And um, they're, they're cool. They kind of have blues-based, uh, funky soul, traditional R&B. Uh, I dig this and vibe with this. And um, you should too. But what I'm getting at is, this is a 2018. I think I bought this right before COVID hit. Or uh, I snuck in a flip right before I didn't go to the record store for months because of this whole situation. And this was 50% off. Uh, it's only 1,000 copies. Are people just anti-funk? Do they not vibe with the groove? I don't know if they can't get with the get down or why this sat, but it seems to be a reoccurring thing. Uh, this thing just sat. So 
that I know for a fact I've never shown. This also, this theme was building in my head today. Uh, shout out, my boy, uh, Psychedelic Snow, Snowy. He likes more than just psych. Uh, he gets down with funk and jazz, etc. And so he found an OG of this Jimmy Caster, right? Uh, this is not, but this is a limited 2,000 copies, also released in 1972. Uh, people are going to know this from the song Troglodyte, which is like this crazy funk novelty. Um, but this is cool. And then I think I described this in the past where they like, kind of kisses disco. But there's more, there's more complexity to this. There's low spots. There's parts that are like orchestral and very jazzy. There's low and soft spots. In fact, I think this tapers off on the B-side and there's like a little quiet string section and the, the album just kind of tapers off slowly after being funky. But so, uh, side one, creation into It's Just Begun, the uh, titular track. And then Troglodyte Caveman is uh, the third track. That's the big thing that everyone's buying on this. Um, but this is another thing. I saw this in Asheville, two different stores, uh, lingering about. I saw this in Charlotte, lingering about. I got back home and I passed it on multiple times. I'm like, this is everywhere. I knew for a fact there's like four or five of these lingering at Horizon Records, just like that other uh, record that was in the bin for a year and a half, two years. And I got this 50% off. And uh, I've mentioned this in the past. If you're going to do a colored pressing, tie it in. I love that both the center label and the red wax um, completely work for um, uh, this record. Cheese, potential thumbnail. So um, that's rad shit. All right, not record store day. I've shown this in the past. This is a freaking stellar uh, album. I own uh, OG First Press on Buddha, I believe. Um, so I bought a player. And the reason I bought a player... I actually bought three of these because these were so stupid and expensive. This is not Record Store Day, but this is kind of in that same realm. This is 1976, but this is limited to 500 copies. Calendar. It's a monster. This was released a couple Halloweens ago. So I was on um, Get Import CDs on eBay, and um, I saw they had like three or four copies left. So I was like, yeah, duh. Uh, I gotta do that. They were so stupid cheap. I think they were like, buy one, get two, half off. So I bought all three. There was none for sale online. At, 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 or that none were on sale. So I grabbed that. And within a month, they're already going up in price. I sent one to my boy, Jam on Vinyl. I broke uh, two off to uh, Frank at Pharmacy Records. He just put them in on trade. One sold instantly. And then uh, one lingered about for a little bit because people weren't catching on. I don't know what the deal is. This is a banger. And uh, I caught it on sale online. This is cool funk. You'll also see a theme with this. This is a Light in the Attic uh, reissue. A lot of these people have the faux OB strip. Just like kind of like detailed rundown of whatever the occasion is. Whether it's Black Friday Record Store Day, True Record Store Day, or a novelty that they tied into Halloween. If you can see there, all my cigar accoutrements, cutter and my drink and uh, nonsense in this uh, ring light I only use to uh, hold the camera. But uh, any hoozles, uh, this is a banger. It's on black wax, but uh, I do like that they kind of tied in their logo to the colors, uh, custom center label. So uh, cool beans on that. It, it just lingered. Another thing that lingered, uh, I don't know, the first or second time I shot up to uh, Charlotte, first time I was in Lunchbox. So I go there and it's a couple months after a record store day. And uh, this one, inexcusably, uns I don't, first of all, it's inexcusable that they get all bought up. I don't know how many copies of this he bought. He was down to two or three. I'd like to think, man, this is only like a month and a half after record store day. Was this just on sale for the sake of being on sale? I don't know. I thought it would have moved. But I caught this for whatever it was, 30, 40% off. I don't quite recall. But, um... I don't think there's anything really grandiose about it. But, uh, yeah, there's custom sleeves on one side, and then the uh, the uh, Woodstock uh, sleeves on the other side. Um, once again, uh, this is a, a double LP, and it's on, um, it's, it's uh, if you bought it full price, fairly expensive, and post the fact, definitely expensive. It's paper sleeves. I, I'm being redundant. I apologize. But it just fits that theme of something that was 
inexpen you know, inexpensive on sale lingered about. Who doesn't like Sly and the Family Stone? That's a marquee name and an amazing performance. This never should have made it to being on sale. So my point is with this whole record store day, some things linger. So I don't know if you guys want to people pop up in the comment section of what's lingered about for you, whatever the genre is for record store day, but these tend to linger and I think it's music of value and merit. So uh, check them out if you get a chance. See what your bins are offering. Uh, you know, Horizon in town keeps a old stock record store day box, like a lot of record stores do, like Lunchbox in North Carolina. Anyways, speaking of Lunchbox, uh, my boy Frank of Pharmacy Records is friends with uh, Scott of Lunchbox. We're just a couple hours away, and occasionally they exchange records. And so uh, they were trading records for what they thought, you know, hey, this might sell better over there, this might sell better over here. And so after the fact, uh, this was marked down a couple bucks of what the MSRP would have been for Record Store Day. So I want to say this is like, I don't know, what was it, like... 18, 19, 20 bucks or whatever. So, you know, this probably would have been brand new. Uh, 24, 25 on Record Store Day. Uh, depending on how people were charged it. Uh, but this Johnny Guitar Watson, not a crazy markdown, but lingered about, was on the wall at Pharmacy Records. So I snapped it. Another thing that wasn't full price. Um, this is a paper sleeve, but it's like a dense cardboard stock that's uh, anti-static. Uh, and that's, that's cool. That's fine by me. But um, a unique center label you don't see every day. And this is on transparent uh, blue wax that ties into the theme uh, of the blue shirt. I'm a big fan of if you're going to do a record press and, and colored, that it should tie into the theme overall. And uh, just to be that guy that goes overboard with, um, with uh, Five Fresh Finds, uh, here's another one. This is the only uh, Johnny Guitar Watson I had prior to this. And so, uh, on the value, on the merit or the reputation of this album, I bought that album. But that's both Cheesecake, Bad Album Cover, and Automobiles? Tremendous. Stupendous. Um, once again, look at that. Is that a Thunderbird? I want to say that's a Gibson Thunderbird or not a Jazzmaster. I can't... If someone knows better than I or better than me, um, what that guitar is. And not an Explorer? I'm having a complete and total brain fart right now. I know what that guitar is. If anyone knows, um, feel free to uh, plug that into the uh, uh, YouTube comment stream textversation that we're all a part of. But so, that's more of the same. So these are all, the rest of these, the bulk of these are going to be all pharmacy finds. And that's all gravy. Not that I don't find other things in this realm, uh, in town and other places, uh, including, you know, uh, cabin floor, but... That's neither here nor there. So, uh, I saw a couple people discuss uh, Gil, uh, Gil Scott Heron lately. I'm a big fan. I have one gap. Uh, the one with the uh, Revolution will not be televised. I just can't seem to stumble on that, and that's getting kind of pricey. Uh, another reason why it's formulated in my mind, I was talking to Andre Linda Leg this weekend. He's an enabler. And he was like, hey, man, what's... Uh, have you looked into the... Uh, Carolina Soul, what, what are you buying? Are you, are you looking at anything? So I looked at the auction, and uh, the album I wanted by this artist went for over 100 bucks. So I'm just letting that go until one of these days. It just kind of, you know, it tickles my fancy. I find it for the prices right, and I'm going to snatch it. But um, this is not that album, but this is uh, in the same realm. Uh, also, this will tie into the theme of um, a lot of people are doing gatefolds. So this gatefold's pretty cool. Artwork in here. You have to buy this if you're South Carolinian, by the way. Why wouldn't you? But um, this is just good quality music, man. Some of this is kind of like spoken word, almost poetry delivered. And this also, too, has like um, lulls and soft spots in both these albums. I might be crossing them up here in my mind because it's been a while since I spun these. I've owned these for a while, but I don't believe uh, these ever made it to, um, to video. And I also got uh, Bridges... And I don't know if, if any or all, you know, I don't know if one or any of these uh, made it the video, but it is what it is. But to continue this as one of this artist, we're going to call this a fresh find, this artist as a whole. You got to snag these when you find these. Uh, this is just tremendously, tremendously clean, uh, phenomenal condition. Um, another gatefold. 
Uh, if you guys know me and King Kong and all that, I'm a, I'm a big dumb monkey. I like I like gorillas and things of that nature. But besides the album cover, um, I think this music has value. Uh, this was not terribly expensive. Uh, I don't recall the price by any means. So, uh, this is not a glossy, but this is almost like a cardboard construction cover. So the fact that this has survived all these years without ring wear and a tremendous amount of grime and this condition is really appreciated. I've always been a big fan of this Arista paper sleeve from back in the day because the print and the cutout and the tie-in I think is pretty cool but um, this record is in great condition and uh, happy to have it. I don't even recall what this is. This might have still been a sub ten dollar record or right on the cusp thereabouts but um, this band is um, pretty legit. Uh, not just the musician but the actual band playing together. Uh, jazzy moments of course um, African kind of soul elements. Uh, this is uh, pretty rad. A uh, segue from that to this. Also with African f uh, influence. Well, if you can't tell by the way they they chose their name, a mandrill is a uh, was it an old world monkey? Is that the lineage uh, of monkeys like baboons and um, macaques and things of that nature? And of course drills. Not only is there a, a petite drill, but then there's the ma mandrill, and of course they're also related to baboons. But uh, a mandrill is both a uh, a type of monkey and also the name of this band. I think man mandrills now still are like relegated only Cameroon and uh, Congo. Why do I know these things? I should probably sleep at night. I don't. Veronica makes fun of me all the time for knowing random facts. But uh, cheers to Veronica. Hopefully, if she's watching, uh, why would she watch? She hears me enough. She doesn't need to watch this. Crease break? Baby, it's a crease breaks. I caught it when I was opening it earlier. So maybe you're just a crack of your ear if you have like some. A Superman level of hearing you heard this so uh, this is their debut sidetrack I do that but I'm back um, Polydor is what this is on um, everyone's gonna know Polydor because this era uh, James Brown was dropping his like probably albums like 28 through 42 of however many albums of the work the hardest working man in Hollywood um, or music business show business whatever that moniker is um, was on Polydor um, this is funky as all get out. Uh, this is really cool. Layered complexities. Um, big piece band on this. Uh, really, really dig it. I know this is the Brothers Wilson on this. Carlos Wilson, Lou Wilson, and Rick Wilson. R.I.C. like Ric Flair Wilson. Uh, that covers trumpet, saxophone, flugelhorn, congas, uh, vocals and backup vocals, percussions, flute, trombone and guitar just from those three gentlemen carlos uh, padro is drums percussion vocals omar mesa lead guitar vocals percussion uh bundy sinak uh bass percussion vocals and uh claude cave organ piano vibes percussion vocals so a lot going on with this band uh the first several uh, have value there's sure to be turnover in the band um if you dig santana you're probably gonna like this in fact, I think they had crossover as people left this band. They joined that. So, um, yeah, you're going to vibe with it. There's definitely Latin vibes, but more out, and then African vibes as well, if you can't tell, like, the ties to the art and the the styling. But uh, more, I'd almost say, like, Caribbean or island vibes are the undertones on this uh, funky, groovy R&B showcase. And a uh, tremendous album. I'd score the first several if you could, but that's rad. All right, and my last one's a showstopper. This, some people might just dismiss this. It doesn't look that impressive. This isn't gonna go for, it's not a hundred dollar record, anything like that. Uh, I don't know if it would be a grail, but you gotta grab it when it's in this condition. I love most all things, uh, Parliament Funkadelic. You know, I saw Parliament a few times. Uh, Parliament United, Parliament Express, uh, George Clinton, the P-Funk All-Stars. You know, Bootsy came and left the band multiple times. And, he toured with his sons that did rap sections. I saw Church Lady, um, who's tremendous. If you don't know who Church Lady is, uh, what band was she in? If I recall, I'll insert it. I know I know the album. I want to say it's Brainstorm. Uh, that she, and she was made a, a cameo in this. I'm getting sidetracked. Roll with it. Um, just enough to put me over 20 minutes. Uh, but she was in that um, White Boy in the Hood movie. Um, 
I can't recall right now. It's amazing. But uh, she funked out. She's very nasally and awesome. And not, all that's neither here nor there. But what I was getting at as this A-side winds down. Okay, so I was full sidetrack here while flipping uh, to the B-side. Uh, so who knows what my train of thought is or how editing's going to go about. I tried to hit 20 minutes. I couldn't even get out the last album. The movie I was referring to is The Breaks. It's stupid comedy. It's great. You're probably not going to recognize the um, Mitch Mullaney, the uh, white stand-up comedian that used to be on BET Comic View back in the day. Um, but Carl Anthony Payne and uh, Paul LeJai Parker, uh, Clifton Powell, Loretta Devine. Uh, if, if, if you guys watch black comedies, you're probably going to uh, remember all these people. But there's a scene in this movie that maybe on YouTube there might be a snippet I could rip and shove in here to make this video even longer. Let's go 30 minutes here. Oh, shit happens. But, uh, Belita Wood of Brainstorm, I think I might have mentioned that. She was a vocalist on this band, but also some of the uh, iterations of uh, Parliament, Funkadelic, etc. over the years. So, uh, if my brain was acting right, who knows, I'll see this upon review. Uh, that was the singer I was talking about. But what I was really getting at before I just went on a <sighs> Eric out there tangent... Uh, this is grail status uh, simply because you don't see this in this condition. Any of that Bootsy, Parliament, Funkadelic, George Clinton stuff is always beat up to death. So it's amazing when you find it, especially a factory sealed figure protection. Um, with that, I don't know, you wouldn't call it a hype stick, but you know, a factory sticker, a true hype sticker, even one on the back. But uh, this is one of my favorite... Uh, uh, this song, I'd Rather Be With You on this, is one of my favorite. Anything under that Parliament, Funkadelic, Bootsy, George Clinton umbrella, this might be my favorite song out of all of them that they ever did. So to find that in the shrink at Pharmacy Records um, is super cool. Um, really clean. You can see there's, I'm trying to showcase it, there's a slight hair scratch that doesn't affect play in any way whatsoever. There's no pops, crackles, noise, static on this. Uh, really pleased to have found that. But so, uh, let's wrap that up. Uh, Nina Simone lurking in the background, because uh, I figured why not? That's never been seen in the vinyl community. Wink. So, um... Oh, right. I hope you enjoyed a cigar with me. I don't want to drag out the goodbye, because I probably ate up too much of your time. Uh, I might sneak in a clip. I might get fancy with editing. Who knows? It's all a mystery right now. Uh, take care. Be well. God bless. Funk out.